Do you want milk or cream? I don't want a whole cup, just to sit and try it. Nothing black. Just to try it to see if I like it. I'm very particular on my coffee. I just like to try it. Well, well. Okay, here we are. We're at the Mogus restaurant. This is in Wellesley. I've got Yorick here. I've got my cup of coffee. I have my Texas French toast coming. More to the point, I have King Henry VI, Part 3. We're going to give this a little pass here. Act 4, Scene 1. Excuse me. All right. Where was I? And to Richard of Gloucester, George of Clarence, third Duke of Somerset and Montague. Now tell me, Brother Clarence, what think you of this new marriage with the Lady Grey? Hath not our brother made a worthy choice? Alas, you know, tis far from hence to France. How could he stay till Warwick made return? My lords, forbear this talk. Here comes the king. Flourish, enter King Edward, Lady Grey, now Queen Elizabeth, Pembroke, Stafford, Hastings, four stand at one side and four on the other. And his well-chosen bride. I mind to tell him plainly what I think. Now, Brother of Clarence, how like you our choice, that you stand pensive as half malcontent, as well as, as Lewis of France or the Earl of Warwick, which are so weak of courage and in judgment that they'll take no offense at our okay, abuse. I get it. See if you like it. it don't go by. No. Suppose they take offense without a cause. They are but Lewis and Warwick. I am Edward, your king and Warwick's, and must have my will. We shall have your will, because our king, yet hasty marriage, seldom proveth well. Yea, Brother Richard, are you offended too? Not I, no. God forbid that I should wish them severed, whom God hath joined together. I. Are you oh, Shakespeare. It's um, Shakespeare. King Henry the Sixth, uh, Part One. Here, I'll. Uh, I'll the skull present. Why? Oh, the skull. The skull is very important. This is my friend Yorick here, who's with me on every step of the journey. Okay. Yep, yeah, Yorick is my special friend here. Okay. And I'm reading the whole canon out loud in order and in public. Do you do that often? Uh, <laughs> a little less than one a week. If I want to finish in the year. That's the goal. Wow. Pretty kooky, huh? No. Just different. Not kooky, just different. I've been all over the world. I've uh, I read in Stratford. I've read in front of the Eiffel Tower. I've read in front <laughs> of Notre Dame. What was the connection? Well, this is Yorick. Remember in uh, Hamlet. I introduced just already. In Hamlet. In he, Hamlet. He pulls out the skull. The grave digger gives it to him. And he says, alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Basically, before you even tell me that, I bet his message was, there's gold in them bar. <laughs> <laughs> Bones. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Along with mercury, freaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> DNA, it's all right there. It's all right there. This is actually Bill Shakespeare himself. Oh, he was pretty genius, wasn't he? He was pretty genius. So now go on to tell me what he wrote. Well, well, but I bet that's what he meant. Yes, exactly. So what did he write? He wrote, well, I'll, do you want to know the other plays? Not yet. I'm just curious as to what he oh, wrote. Oh, 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 oh. That that's Didn't the line. Know? Yes, I haven't what gotten to Hamlet yet. It says, alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio. And what he's talking about is the jester of his youth from the court who used to, you know, play games with him and hang out with him oh, and make he jokes. And, and, he, and he was, pop, maybe, but he, uh, he died in any event. And, and so he, he bones There you go. He died of. Exactly. <laughs> And you only wish he could have saved him. You only wish he could have saved him. Exactly. Yeah. So there you have it. Yeah. Um, you well, sure. Uh, you know, come check out the blog sometime if you want. Oh, I'm not a computer anything. Ew. Oh, all right. Tells me. Oh, all right. Well, then don't. Yeah. But um, but yeah, thanks but if you for. If you want to talk and whatever and hang out, that would be cool. Oh, all right. Well. Yeah. Why is there something over that? Just that would still project the heat, but keep everyone safe. I have to speak to the owner about that. How about you do that? Hey, thanks. Yes, no problem, because, you know, it would be really good because I do everything. Hello, you Look at this. All right? It's, it's just worked. Shakespeare has actually just gotten me a phone number. Can you believe that? God loves Shakespeare. York, I thank you. Best wingman ever. Okay, <laughs> setting all that aside. My food's here, it's not all that great. I'm gonna keep reading um, uh, 4 1, King Henry VI, Part 3. Line, I think I was only on line 24. King Edward. 
Setting your scorns and your mislike aside, tell me some reason why the Lady Grey should not become my wife and England's queen. And you too, Somerset and Montague, speak freely what you think. And this is my opinion, that King Louis becomes your enemy for mocking him about the marriage of the Lady Bona. And Warwick, doing what you gave in charge, is now dishonored by this new marriage. What if both Louis and Warwick be appeased by such invention as I can devise? Yet to have joined with France in such alliance would more have strengthened this our commonwealth against foreign storms than any homebred marriage. <clears throat> when knows not Montague that of itself, England is safe, if true within itself. But the safer one is backed with France. It is better using France than trusting France. Let us be backed with God and with the seas, which he hath given for fence impregnable, and with their helps only defend ourselves. In them and in ourselves our safety lies. For this one speech, Lord Hastings well deserves to have the heir of the Lord Hungerford. I what of that? It was my will and grant. And for this once, my will shall stand for law. And it methinks your grace hath, hath not done well to give the heir and daughter of Lord Scales unto the brother of your loving bride. She better would have fitted me or Clarence, but in your bride you bury brotherhood. Mm or else you would not have bestowed the heir of the Lord Bonville on your, on your new wife's son and leave your brothers to go speed elsewhere. Well, ask poor Clarence. Is it for a wife that thou art malcontent? I will provide thee. In choosing for yourself, you showed your judgment, which being shallow, you shall give me leave to play the broker in mine own behalf. And to that end, I shortly mind to leave you. Leave me or tarry. Edward will be king and not be tired into his brother's will. My lords, before it pleased his majesty to raise my stage title of a queen, do me but write, and you must all confess, that I was not ignoble of descent, and meaner than myself have had like fortune. But as this title honors me and mine, so your dislikes to whom I would be pleasing doth cloud my joys with danger and with sorrow. My love, forbear to fawn upon their frowns. What danger or what sorrow can befall thee, so long as Edward is thy constant friend and their true sovereign, whom they must obey? Name, whom, whom they shall obey, and love thee too. Unless they seek for hatred at my hands, which if they do, yet will I keep thee safe, and they shall feel the vengeance of my wrath. I hear, yet say not much, but think the more. What did I want to mark there? It was similar to, but in your bride, you bury brotherhood. Enter post, <coughs> King Edward. Now, messenger, what letters, what news from France? Mm -hmm. My sovereign liege, no letters, and few words, but such as I, without your special pardon, dare not relate. Go to, we pardon thee, therefore in brief. Tell me the words as near as thou canst guess them. What answer makes King Louis unto our letters? At my depart, these were his very words. Go tell false Edward, thy supposed king, that Louis of France is sending over maskers to revel it with him and his new bride. Is Louis so brave? Be like he thinks me Henry. But what said Lady Bona to my marriage? These were her words, uttered with mild disdain. Tell him, in hope he'll prove a widower shortly. I'll wear the willow garland for his sake. Well, I blame not her. She could say a little less. She had the wrong. But what said Henry's queen? For I have heard that she was there in place. Tell him, quoth she, my morning weeds are done, and I am ready to put armor on. Be like she minds to play the Amazon. But what said Warwick to these injuries? He more incensed against your majesty than all the rest discharged me with these words. Tell him from me that he hath done me wrong, and therefore I'll uncrown him ere to be long. <sighs> Does the traitor breathe out so proud words? Well, I will arm me, being thus forewarned. They shall have wars and pay for their presumption. But say, is Warwick friends with Margaret? Aye, gracious sovereign, they are so linked in friendship that young Prince Edward marries Warwick's daughter. Be like the elder, Clarence will have the younger. Now, brother king, farewell, and sit you fast, for I will hence to Warwick's other daughter, that though I want a kingdom, yet in marriage I may not prove inferior to yourself. You that love me, and Warwick, follow me. Exit Clarence, and Somerset follows. Richard. Not I. My thoughts aim at a further matter. I stay not for the love of Edward, but the crown. Clarence and Somerset both gone to Warwick? Yet am I armed against the worst can happen. And haste is needful in this desperate case. 
Pembroke and Stafford, you in our behalf, go levy men and make prepare for war. They are already or quickly will be landed. Myself in person will straight follow you. But ere I go, Hastings and Montague, resolve my doubt. You twain, of all the rest, are near to Warwick, by blood and by alliance. Tell me if you love Warwick more than me. If it be so, then both depart to him. I rather wish you foes than hollow friends. But if you mind to hold your true obedience, give me assurance with some friendly vow that I may never have you in suspect. So God help me, Montague, as he proves true, and Hastings, as he favors in Edward's cause. Now, Brother Richard, will you stand by us? Aye, in despite of all that shall withstand you. Why so? Then am I sure of victory. Now therefore let us hence, and lose no hour till we meet with Warwick with his foreign power.